off breed of, you know, humans that went out in the forest years and years ago. Maybe had a couple of generations of, you know, family out in the woods and, you know, kind of take on the looks kind of like a Bigfoot. Because I know back in 1923, around Lake Union, the old coal fire uh, a power plant, there was reports of a hairy man would come down and go through the garbage, uh, you know, cans and stuff like that, and then run off to the hills. That's before Seattle got to what, you know, the size of it. But then that kind of vanished a few years later, the reports of it. But it, who knows what's out there? And that's the whole point. Right. Yeah, we we don't know. That is exactly the point. And what, one of the things that I've, I've found extremely interesting, um, well, a couple of things. One is um, a lot of Native American tribes have, you know, the, the, the legends of Bigfoot being, you know, in, in their belief system, but it's another tribe of human beings. And then we have, you know, and they would trade with them. Uh, the, the Bigfoot would steal, uh, you know, they would, they would steal, you know, women to, uh, you know, to, to, to mate with. And then we have um, DNA evidence of, of, of Bigfoot that, that, you know, they, you know, people have this, uh, you know, Bigfoot DNA. Uh, Dr. Melba Ketchum was one of them. There was an, also another, there was a uh, Bigfoot researcher in uh, Alberta uh, who had some, some Bigfoot DNA. And, and then there was, there's a, a, a scientist in, in England uh, he either at Cambridge or, or Oxford, I don't remember which, um, but did some DNA, had some DNA testing done on some Bigfoot evidence from, um, from Russia. And what all of these came back with was they were human. Now, now that can be answered a, n- a number of different ways. I mean, uh, the people who collected, whether it be Bigfoot hair and blood or Bigfoot scat or whatever, you know, maybe they didn't do it right. Maybe, you know, a hair fell off or some skin flakes, you know, fell off and, and contaminated, uh, you know, what, whatever they, they, they said was, was, it was Bigfoot DNA. Um, or maybe it was, was Bigfoot DNA and they're just people. That's a possibility. You know, all of, all of these different, uh, you know, different tests that I'd mentioned, showed that they were human DNA. It was human DNA, but there were some abnormalities that couldn't be explained. You know, maybe it was Bigfoot DNA and Bigfoot's just people. Or a breed of people. How's that? Yeah, no, I'm right there. It could be just a breed of people. I mean, it had been people, uh, you know, some some people theorize that, uh, that, that Bigfoot's a remnant uh, uh, tri- a tribe of, uh, you know, Neanderthals that have, that have, survived this time well if people can think that why you know why can't we just think they're humans that are just big and hairy yeah and scary i can tell you that scary part really big hairy and scary yeah oh yeah not to be confused with my name gary but anyway moving i don't know why i said that but you know it, it makes me wonder you know i do think there's something out in the woods okay and i don't know you know, one of my friends jokingly said, well, maybe one of these draft dodgers from the Vietnam era went out in the woods and mated with a with a bear. So when they got the test reports of, you know, uh, Bigfoot hunters come back with hair, they tested out the lab. And, oh, no, that's this bay, bear hair. Well, right. I mean, did they see <laughs> did, did they see the Bigfoot rub against the tree and leave the hair? No. Yeah. You know, or they just see hair. You know, I, I, there's all sorts of known animals out there. There was, uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, uh, some supposed Yeti hair that was brought back from the Himalayas, and it turned out to be from um, a species they thought was um, was extinct of uh, a bear that uh, is apparently still alive out there. So, I mean, there, that was kind of finding a cryptid. But could you? No, it wasn't a yeti. Could you imagine being in the Himalayas, right? And you're up there hike, uh, not hiking, but you know, mountain climbing or whatever they're doing, right? And they see this creature. It stands eight to ten, twelve feet tall. 
you know, uh, and it's a dude, maybe sunlight and well, hey, people can think, well, gee, they're not realizing because it's no bear in the area. They're thinking, oh, this is kind of like a big, a Bigfoot, you know, a whatever, a Yeti, whatever. Uh, that could have been a lot of that, too. You know, stories also get magnified as they go on. Right. Yeah, absolutely. They do, because, I mean, the telling of the story, people, uh, um, you know, have to embellish them. I mean, and, and stories, stories definitely change. You know, you, you like in a college communication class, I had to uh, whisper something to the person next to me who whispered something to the person, the same thing to the person next to him and so on and so on. And, you know, it changed by the end of, you know, by the end of the class. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, just telling a story is, is, has, definitely has, has, has a problem. Um, now, I, I said that I, I was you know, more in line with the, uh, with the flesh and blood Bigfoot. I am not discounting, uh, you know, a lot of people's, uh, you know, hypothesis that, uh, Bigfoot might be an interdimensional creature. Like you, like you had mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm also a nuts and bolts UFO craft kind of guy because I, I want to see those things disproven first before I move on to, you know, interdimensional. Although there are a lot of things that, you know, show that you know bigfoot might be like the fact that he can disappear oh yeah uh, there have been a number of different uh you know different times where, where people have reported following bigfoot tracks and then they're just they're gone totally vanish i will say this to james out there who's listening okay yes james he, uh, bigfoot from my experience of what i ran into with my friend who was a medical doctor does not give off orbs. I didn't get any telecommunications from what we saw, but I honestly will stand this. And you can, if you want to pay for a lie detector test, you can. I'm more than happy to take it. Getting in the car, whatever it was, threw a rock and put a big dent in my wife's car, and I have to still to this day live with that. So whatever I ran into, I don't know what it was. Like I said, it could have been a hairy man uh, that uh, you know has been out living for the last 30 years 40 years out in the woods who knows but whatever it was it scared the you know what out of me yeah and well I, yeah these things are, are awesome when they happen to somebody else i would have hated to have that experience well um, wreck, wreck my all... <laughs> trip i'll tell you that because me and my friend the whole purpose of going up to the canadian rockies was going and taking pictures of ghost towns that was an old japanese internment camp up in the middle of the rockies in the middle of nowhere we decided after that experience, we went straight back home. I mean, that was it. No more. No more taking pictures. No more wanting to do anything. And never, I'll be honest with you, I've never gone into the forest or gone camping since that experience because I don't want to find out. Right. Well, there are, um, after listening to interviews and, and reading uh, things that David Politis has, has written, I don't really want to go in the woods either. Especially the national parks. Well, that, um, that you know, but it's not just the woods. I I had a guest on last week. It's not this that. It's the amount of people missing. It, it, you know, nationally, thousands and tens of thousands of people are missing. That the FBI can't even get a trace of what happened to them each year. Then you multiply it with all the other countries. There's over three hundred thousand people are vanishing a year that are not accountable. Uh, for what happened to them no trace of them like they never existed yeah and there are there are people who uh want to disappear who do there are people who are are kidnapped who never get re you know never get found there are people who die out in the wilderness who never never are found you know there and there are a lot of these terrestrial explanations and then there's the weird things and people are disappearing for paranormal reasons i'm 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 uh, convinced of that. Well, it's something, you know, like, again, I would think the FBI, with the amount of people that are vanishing every year, they would at least be able to, you know, put closure on a lot of it, but it's growing every year. So it tells me, I don't know if aliens are abducting them or if it's something other paranormal that's going on, but something's happening to American, and not just American, but, I mean, worldwide, to people. I mean, it's scary. Right, and... When it uh, when it comes to uh, you know other other dimensions that like you know let's go go back to that um, John Keel um, you know said that you know he he thought that there were window areas places 
that uh, you know that high strangeness usually happens in, and I think that's accurate because there are a lot of places where weird things continue to happen, and if there are window areas that open to other dimensions or other times, you know, who I mean, that could be where some people are disappearing to. Well, you can imagine tripping yeah. out and out in the woods, and you stumble a, a, an open window. It's one way. Well, I uh, interviewed a uh, interviewed a woman uh, who said that she and a few friends were taking a hike hike out in the woods uh, up in Iowa. Iowa, contrary to popular belief, is not just cornfields. They they do have woods up there. Um, and she was, uh, they were walking around, and they saw a spot in the sky that the weather was different than what that they what they had, and the background was different. The background should have been trees, but it was just a hole, like a ragged hole in the sky, and it was blue, and there was a it was in front of a tree, and a bird flew into it, and I guess kept flying. She was pretty convinced that that was a uh, you know a dimensional portal that had opened up in the sky and in, in in the woods in Iowa. Yeah, maybe they I mean, maybe these things are happening all over the place. Well, it could be. That's people are maybe a lot of people are gone missing. Now, going back, uh, uh, what other creatures? Let's pick us uh, California. What type of creatures have been reported in California? If you, if you can think of any, one of um, one of my uh, my favorite ones from California are the night watchers. And the Night Watchers, one of the reasons that I really like this is, is the Night Watchers uh, is a um, Native American story uh, in the mountains. The, um, you know, people will have reported for hundreds upon hundreds of years seeing human figures standing on ledges of the mountains looking out towards uh, toward the ocean, and they don't seem to move. And when people go up to, uh, to investigate these dark figures are gone and um, no, they don't leave anything behind. I mean, they don't leave any, uh, any footprints or any, any, no, any, uh, you know, explanation as to, to where they were or who they were. Um, and uh, the story in, in California was so well known that John Steinbeck wrote about, uh, wrote about the night watchers in, in one of his short stories. You know, it's one of these things, is it a monster or is it something paranormal? Is it a trick of light and shadows? But it was never just in the same place. So it begs, you know, the, the, the question, you know, what, what, what is it? Um, could be, could be spirits, could be, could be something, uh, something other dimensional. We I, I don't know, but, uh, uh, that's pretty fun. Interesting. Well, let's pick some other states like uh, Texas. What is what is going on with Texas with creatures and cryptics? Well, in uh, Texas and Fort Worth, they have the uh, the Fort Worth Worth Lake Monster. Uh, back in the uh, like seventies and and eighties, there were reports of this uh, large, six seven foot tall creature uh, with whitish fur, dirty white fur. Uh, that had a goat's head that was terrorizing uh, people, especially, you know, like teenagers and people parking out by the lake to make out. Uh, it was terrorizing them. Uh, there's even a, a, there was a photograph that was taken uh, on Polaroid uh, of, of this creature. Uh, the guy who took the, took the picture, they saw this, this creature and it threw an old tire at them and screamed at them. And, and, you know, I took a picture and everybody, everybody left. But this is a type of goat man that seems to be fairly fairly popular. Uh, there's a goat man in uh, in Missouri. There's one in uh, is it Virginia, or uh, I think it's in Virginia. Uh, and there's also one in uh, the TNT area of West Virginia, and um, which is where the Mothman sightings first uh, first you know came about. Um, the legend of the goat man, or sometimes called sheep squatch. Uh, tends to be the same type of thing. It's a humanoid uh, sheep-looking <laughs> looking creature uh, with uh, with with horns, and uh, it'll sometimes chase people. Uh, other times, it's just seen uh, peacefully in the woods, walking around on two legs. 
Interesting. There are also occasions where people will see something that looks like a, a satyr, uh, you know, pan from the old Greek legends. But uh, those are uh, a lot less common than uh, than a goat squatch. Interesting. Now, Alaska. And the reason why I mentioned Alaska, because I was reading today, you know, their ice, sea ice is for the first time. Well, the second time it's ever happened. They don't have any ice left. It's all 